Welcome and thank you for joining us today. My name is Titus Matthew. I'm the Housing Director of the City of Phoenix. I'm so happy to be here to celebrate groundbreaking of the new Hirasol uh, apartment community. We're here at the former Sydney P. Osborne apartment site, once home to 145 plus public housing units built in 1960. It's actually older than me. Um, so these former units were demolished earlier this year. And as you can see, the site is now a blank slate for what we'll see in the future. Hirosol mixed income apartment community offering affordable and market rate units. Since last year, community engagement team had encouraged former Sydney P. Osborne and Edison Eastlake residents to help come up with a new name for this community. Through various promotional efforts, including brainstorming concepts on flip charts, documenting memories from Sydney P. Osborne community at a storytelling workshop, and gathering naming suggestions at a community events in Edison Eastlake community newsletters, a theme resonated with residents, Hear Us All, the Spanish translation for sunflower to represent resilience and new growth. In addition, sunflowers were grown and flourished in the former C Sydney B. Osborne Community Garden. Hear Us All will be developed in three phases and when complete, will include a total of 364 units across three four-story buildings. Units ranging in size from one to three bedrooms will come with energy efficient appliances and washers and dryers in each unit. The mayor will be happy about that. Yes. <laughs> Hira Sol will also include community rooms and fitness center, balconies with storage playgrounds and a splash pad. A former neighborhood park that used to be located on this site will be reimagined and included as part of the site's redevelopment for residents and the surrounding community to enjoy. We also look forward to working with the city's arts and culture department to incorporate public art component on this site. As we reinvest in this community, neighborhood beautification is also top of the mind. That's why today is also exciting. It marks another important milestone in a continued revitalization of the Edison East Lake community. I would be remiss to say that this was the development at, and all the community revitalization underway is only made possible by the 42.5 million Choice Neighborhoods Grant funding from HUD. We're also grateful to HUD for the support of Phoenix with this award as well. And I also want to recognize William Rhodes, the local HUD director representing HUD today. Another funding component of Hirosol is the voter approved general obligation bond allocation, which provides important gap funding to make this development a reality. And thanks to mayor and council for doing that as well, and the voters of Phoenix for passing the vote as well. This Edison Eastlake community, once home to the largest concentration of public housing in the state, will offer various housing options, including a home ownership component. We have seen much progress in the Edison Eastlake neighborhood, and we will see even more progress in the coming months. We are well underway with the transformation of this community, including a new housing units, as well as amenities and services that we provided in the community, walking distance from many residents' homes. At this time, I'd like to invite Nicole Armstrong Best, the director of Vatakai Sudakai Museum, and she's going to do a land acknowledgement statement as well. Thank you. Nicole? Good afternoon, everyone. How's everyone doing? Excellent. Good. Um, I would like to invite you all to come to Sudovaki Museum if you haven't attended yet. Uh, we just reopened with a brand new renovation, so come on out. Um, it is my pleasure to read the uh, City of Phoenix uh, land acknowledgement statement now. The Housing Department acknowledges the City of Phoenix is located within the homeland of the Altam and Pipash peoples and their ancestors who have inhabited this landscape from time immemorial to present day. The landscape is sacred and reflects cultural values central to the Otham and Pipash way of life and their self-definition. This acknowledgement demonstrates our commitment to work in partnership with the ancestral indigenous communities to foster understanding, appreciation, and respect for this heritage. This land continues to be spiritually connected to the Otham and the Salt River Pima Maricopa Indian community and the Gila River Indian community, both of which are confederations of two unique cultures with their own languages, customs, cultures, religions, and histories. These places are tangible reminders to the Otham and Pupash about shared attitudes, goals, and practices that characterize who they are, where they belong, 
and how they relate to each other in the past, continuing today and into the future. The Housing Department is committed to honor the vital meaning and intent of this land acknowledgement statement. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Next, I want to introduce Mayor Kate Gallego, and congratulations on being re-elected. So Mayor Gallego is the second elected female mayor in Phoenix history and the youngest big city mayor in the United States. Prior to serving as mayor, she served as a councilwoman for this particular district where this development first started. Strongly advocating for the Edison Eastlake Choice Neighborhoods community from the start, she's been focused on creating the Phoenix of the future a welcoming, thriving city with highway jobs and opportunities for all. As mayor, she focuses every day on getting things done for Phoenix families, is passionate about building a Phoenix that works for everyone and increasing the quality of life for all Phoenicians. She'll also be the first person to tell you that her most important job is being mom to her son. Mayor, welcome. Okay. Thank you, Titus. I am so excited to be with you. Because of yesterday's election results, I will have the chance to be with this project from planning to the end, and I could not be more excited. This area is our largest concentration of new affordable and public housing in the state of Arizona. Today, we break ground on Hirasol, which will celebrate beauty and resilience, a garden that once was here with sunflowers will become a whole project inspired by it. When I first began my journey here, I was talking with the residents. They were kind enough to invite me into their homes and they pointed out some opportunities to improve. <laughs> uh, they, Titus mentioned how excited I'll be about washing machines and dryers. Uh, that is because the residents said, we gotta dry our clothes by hand and that is not acceptable in this century. They told me the windows didn't let in enough light for their kids to do homework. They talked about the units being so small and, and not making sense for today's larger families. They shared that the cooling system left a lot to be desired. They wanted great places for their kids to play. They wanted to celebrate the beautiful mountains which we can see from this gorgeous site. Today, we break ground on a project that achieves the very high standards our residents set out for us. I want to thank, say thank you to our partners on this, to the Phoenix Housing Department, who was able to successfully receive multiple grants, including a major award from HUD. HUD asked us to put the residents first, and I think we have delivered with this project. To our partners at Gorman, you were with us during those meetings, some of which were hard conversations about where we needed to do better. And I think when I get to see those kids playing in a splash pad, I'm going to feel a sense of, of accomplishment for this. Uh, to our partners at the state, thank you for funding this project and making sure people can be home in one of the most exciting areas of our city. We are near some of the top employment, whether it be downtown or airport, and, and a, again, a beautiful area where you can see Phoenix's mountain parks. The voters of Phoenix are also responsible for today's exciting news. They overwhelmingly supported our housing bond, a $63 million commitment to improve housing, and it was chaired by District 8's own councilwoman, Keisha Hodge Washington. Thank you to our bond committee members who are here and who help say housing is such a top priority for Phoenix. We want to think big and put forward a major commitment. This really is a success story of city, state, and the federal government. When we all come together, we can produce a spectacular project. Thank you all for making today possible. We have a lot to celebrate. Thank you, Mayor. Next, I would like to introduce Councilwoman Keisha Hodge Washington. She has served proudly as District 8 Councilwoman since April of 2023. She's the first African American woman elected to the Phoenix City Council. Councilwoman Hodge Washington's top priorities in the district are homelessness, affordable and attainable housing, go housing, <laughs> uh, economic development as well. She's a graduate of Arizona State University College of Law 
and a former Assistant Attorney General. Councilman Hodge Washington is a passionate leader committed to our community's constructive development. And also, she's been a champion of affordable housing as well. Councilwoman Keisha Hodge Washington. Welcome and thank you all for joining us here today as we move, take another step further into the evolution of the Edison Eastlake Choice Neighborhood Community. I am, as you mentioned, her, the proud council member representing District 8 here in the city of Phoenix that includes the Edison Eastlake community. I am beyond excited to be here today as we celebrate this groundbreaking of a new mixed income community that will include 364 apartment units. This project signifies a new chapter in the Edison Eastlake community as it will replace the former and obsolete Sydney B. Osborne public housing site that was built in 1960. The City of Phoenix is grateful to our partners with partnership with HUD with their support via a $42.5 million investment in Choice Neighborhood Implementation Grant Funds. We are seeing real change in this community. This project represents new investment in the Edison Eastlake community south of Van Buren. The more than 360 housing units that will be added here at this site will provide much needed housing support options for residents. But housing is just one component of the choice neighborhoods. In addition to new and much needed affordable and market rate apartment units that are being built here, we are also incorporating public art as part of our development. We are investing in neighborhood revitalization and beautification something that Edison Eastlake residents specifically told us were important to them. We, as you know, we are fortunate to be so close to the historic Eastlake Park, located approximately a half a mile from here. In addition to the wonderful amenities at Eastlake Park, a new neighborhood park is being developed right here as part of the project, so residents can have additional options for recreation in their own backyard. Edison Park, less than a mile from here, will be expanded and have a linear park will be added along 19th Street. These parks will provide new youth sports field, a new skate park, new walk-in paths, additional shade, exercise equipment, and a healing garden, as all has been designed to activate the Edison Eastlake neighborhood. In addition to the Edison Impact Hub, we will also see a new family education center. It's also in the work that will bring two new Head Start classrooms, an indoor neighborhood fitness center, a dental clinic, maker space, and so much more. These are just some of the great things that are in the works to help transform the Edison Eastlake community. And more, many of this is mentioned by the mayor, which is driven by our community. We believe that community is, communities and neighborhoods should be places where you can live, work, and play. And I wanted to give a quick shout out to the neighborhood organizations that have been corralling and getting the input from the community because you're helping us design a project that works for the needs of our community. We have definitely seen the importance of private and public partnerships in this, and this will be, I think, will be a standard for many other communities to follow. Our partners at Gorman have, like the mayor mentioned, have been just welcoming and accepting to these changes. We also wanted to say, I also again wanted to say a thank you to the voters who supported the last year's general obligation bond. Many individuals we know affordable housing and attainable housing is one of the key initiatives or focus that our community wants. And they actually gave us the, the tools necessary to make these projects a, a reality. They dedicated, by passing the bond, they directed more than $21 million to the redevelopment of this project. So with the renewed investment in the Edison Eastlake community, we are improving the quality of lives for residents that call this neighborhood home. It is truly an exciting time for this community. We are proud of all the work we've accomplished to date and look forward to our continued progress. That is what makes today so special as we break ground on Garrisol. I look forward to the grand opening of the project in 2027, a residential community that residents will be proud to call their home. Thank you, Councilwoman. Next, I'd like to introduce Mr. William Rhodes, who is a field HUD director. We work in great partnership with the local HUD as well as the national level as well, so thank you for being here as well. Mr. Rhodes has been with the Department of Housing and Urban Development for 10 years and is the director of the HUD Phoenix office. Previously, he was a division director for the Los Angeles Office of Public Housing. In his current role, he's responsible for monitoring the performance of all PHAs in the state of Arizona. 
William is a 20-year veteran of the United States Air Force and has worked for the Chicago Housing Authority as well. He's also a certified scuba diving instructor. That's one of his passions as well. So, Mr. Rhodes. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Mayor Gallego, Councilwoman Hodge Washington, Director Matthew, PHA staff, and distinguished guests on behalf of Marcy Vega, the HUD Region 9 Director. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to be part of this important groundbreaking ceremony. Uh, Gearsall Apartments is part of the Phoenix Housing Authority HUD Choice Edison Eastlake neighborhood. And in fiscal year 2024, Choice Neighborhoods awarded 13 planning grants, eight supplemental grants, and seven implementation grants totaling $335 million. Grantees constructed more than 2,700 new housing units, of which 1,330 replaced severely distressed HUD-assisted housing. Raising the, pop the programs total to 16,000 new units constructed, with 7,745 being replacement units. More than 7,000 housing residents have received case management and supportive services. Since being awarded a $30 million Choice Neighborhood Implementation Grant in 2018, the City of Phoenix has made significant strides in transforming Edison Eastlake into a vibrant, mixed-income community. Recently, HUD awarded an additional $2.5 million supplemental grant to the Edison East Link neighborhood, which will support further developments, including new housing, expanded public spaces, and enhanced community services, all furthering HUD's mission to create strong, sustainable, inclusive communities and quality affordable homes for all. And HUD is proud to be a, part, a partnership with the City of Phoenix. Thank you. Thank you, Director Rhodes. Next person I want to introduce is Ruby Dillon Williams, who's the Assistant Director of the Department of Housing in Arizona. Ruby is, she previously worked as Assistant Deputy Director of Housing and Community Development, overseeing multiple programs and served as Rental Programs Administrator. Ruby is a progressive leader with more than 20 years of experience in public and private sector housing development. Ruby? Good afternoon. Thank you so much for having the Arizona Department of Housing here. Uh, Mayor, thank you so much for your commitment to supporting our efforts at the Housing Department. Councilwoman, thank you so much, Titus, and also to HUD. Um, I am here today on behalf of Director Jones Service and Governor Hobbs. Um, as you all may know, Governor Hobbs made a significant investment in Arizona housing and really wanted to make sure that Arizona uh, Arizonans can call any at any housing level of affordability home. And we are a very people-centered government and we are working very hard at the housing department to make that happen. This particular project is incredible for us. It's a, it's a trail, trailblazing project because we have almost $50 million in low-income housing tax credits invested in this project. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the low-income housing tax credit program, it is a very, very powerful vehicle to create housing. It is a public and private investment in housing, which bring partners like Gorman, a private housing developer, with the City of Phoenix together so we can effectuate these housing communities like we do. What I'm so thankful for also is HUD investment, not only in Phoenix, who started this effort with Choice Neighborhoods, but we've also seen a similar investment in the city of Tucson, and we look forward to the work that's being done with our partners more south of us. And so as we work together as a state to create housing for everyone, let's continue to be partners, let's continue to brainstorm and see what works, and let's continue to do the great work that this state needs. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ruby, but just a final note, we're doing better than Tucson. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> so next, I'd like to introduce Brian Swanson, President and CEO of Gorman & Company, who partners with us on this particular project. Brian has been the CEO of Gorman since 2018, after serving as Arizona Market President since 2008, where he led the design and construction of 1,000 housing units across Arizona. It's also spearheaded the redevelopment of some of the first public housing units in the United States using HUD's Rental Assistance Demonstration Program. Before joining Gorman, he held leadership roles in the nonprofit sector. 
And Brian has been a great partner and a friend as well in helping us succeed in what we're trying to achieve here today. Brian? Thank you so much, Titus. Thank you, Mayor. Congratulations. Uh, as a taxpayer in the city of Phoenix, I'm very excited <laughs> about the outcome of uh, the election in some ways, not in all ways, but you know, that was a very big win, so we're, we're really happy for you. Thank you, Councilwoman uh, Keisha Hodge, uh, Washington. We really appreciate all the leadership that you provided uh, since joining the council as well. Um, on behalf of Gorman and Company's 700 employees across the country, 100 of which live and work here in Arizona, many of them standing in the background uh, that do all the hard work and I get to stand up here and take all the credit. I appreciate all of you, uh, so thank you for being here. And we are truly honored uh, to be what's called a housing implementation entity, an HIE, under HUD's Choice Neighborhoods Program. So thank you uh, to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. I just want to uh, quickly uh, share with you a recipe uh, today, and a recipe that only has five ingredients. And so what five main ingredients does it take uh, to pull out the largest redevelopment of public housing in Arizona state history? Okay, and I'm gonna share that recipe with you, so you might wanna take some notes. Uh, <laughs> Number one, it takes political will. Um, our elected officials uh, who are willing to take risks, who support their staff, uh, who care about their neighborhoods, uh, who pass bond initiatives and chair bond uh, committees uh, to invest in housing. And uh, we are just lucky here in Phoenix to have the very best mayor and council really in the entire country. So thank you for your political leadership. Uh, number two, it takes strong city staff leaders who are willing to take risks as well. Um, we are really blessed to have Titus Matthew as the director of the housing department here in Phoenix, Angela Duncan, uh, who's our deputy director here in Phoenix, and the entire city of Phoenix housing department staff, and so many other departments in the city as well, who have come forward from planning and development, city clerk's office, rushing signatures for documents for closings and everything else. So uh, we really appreciate uh, the strong city staff we ha have here in Phoenix. Uh, number three, it takes public-private partnerships, as Ruby mentioned, uh, with companies like my firm and so many other for-profit and non-profit partners, as well as community leaders and residents who live in this neighborhood. Uh, it's really neat to be able to redevelop public housing because you're working with people who already live there. And so you can get their feedback and their input on design, project naming, um, community design, uh, public art, all these things that go into a successful uh, redevelopment like this. Uh, it takes government investments from multiple sectors. We heard from the federal government, the state government, the local government, all coming together for one common purpose, uh, to bring a better neighborhood to the residents uh, of Edison Eastlake. Uh, so we thank all of our government partners who have been part of this project as well. Uh, finally, the fifth ingredient is our capital partners who are here today, uh, U.S. Bank, uh, Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust, who's providing our permanent financing. Combined, they're providing over $30 million of private debt and equity capital to this neighborhood. That's unprecedented, and it's greatly appreciated. Without that investment and commitment and willing to take that risk uh, on this project, we wouldn't be standing here today. So I thank our capital partners as well. Um, when our recipe is done cooking, uh, we will have uh, redeveloped 10 phases of public housing. This is just one of many, many phases. Uh, this is the seventh of 10, actually. The others uh, have happened north of Van Buren. So please drive around the old St. Luke's Hospital and look at some of the most exciting redevelopment uh, that's happening in the whole state. We, we will have invested, by the time this phase is all finished, $370 million in the Edison Eastlake neighborhood, 80% of which is coming from private capital, non-governmental sources. So that is leverage in action. So thank you for that initial federal government investment. Um, we are really redefining an entire neighborhood um, for generations to come. So thank you all for being here. Thank you so much for having Gorman and company and really trusting Gorman to be your partner. Uh, we are truly honored and we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, we're not done yet, so let's keep going. Thank you. I've been trying to convince Gorman and Company to move their headquarters to Phoenix, but we'll see if that happens or not. So next, I'd like to introduce uh, Maria Coazzo, who is a resident member of this community. 
She's been very active and taking part in neighborhood engagement community, community events. And, and I'm going to bring her up here to talk to you as well. She'll be talking to you in Spanish. And we'll have a translator. As well. So Maria has been a dedicated member of Sydney B. Osborne community since 2013. A single mother of four, Maria moved to the area in 2010, living in the former Frank Luke homes until she relocated to Sydney B. Osborne to better support the medical needs of a younger son. She's deeply involved in the community, serving as a former member of the Neighborhood Association, participating in the community garden, and is a valued member of the Edison Eastlake Resident Leadership Council. Maria has been seeing her children grow and thrive in the neighborhood and looks forward to seeing the community flourish. In 2018, she celebrated a milestone when she received a permanent residency. Maria's commitment to her community is a testament to resilience and passion for making a positive impact. Maria? Buenas tardes a todos. Good evening, everybody. Yo soy Maria Collazo. My name is Maria Collazo. Orgullosa de mis cuatro hijos. I am proud of my four children. Eh, yo llegué aquí a la comunidad de Phoenix en el 2010. I arrived to this community in Phoenix in 2010. Eh, yo he enfrentado desafíos a partir de esa fecha, especialmente cuando soy una madre soltera con tres niños con discapacidades. Since then, I have faced challenges especially because I am a single mother with three children with disabilities. Pero yo he tenido bastante apoyo de la comunidad. But I have a lot of uh, support from the community. De la ciudad de Phoenix, de ahora de los apartamentos Gorman. For the, from the city of Phoenix and now from the Gorman apartments. He tenido bastante crecimiento y desarrollo a partir de que me involucro yo en las actividades comunitarias. I, I am involved in community uh, uh, things, in community meetings, and I have had a lot of growth. I estudio mi segundo idioma. I am learning my second language. Estoy haciendo un segundo paso para mi ciudadanía. This, I am doing my second step for my U.S. citizenship. Estoy esperando mi celebración el próximo, el próximo fin de semana. Next. Uh, weekend, I'm going to have my uh, ceremony, U.S. citizen ceremony. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. Uh, el impacto en la familia. The impact in my family. Uh, mis hijos uh, terminaron la high school. Mis dos hijos uh, mm, después de la mayor. La mayor se independizó. Two of my children finished high school, and my oldest daughter, uh, she became independent. Y muy orgullosa de mis cuatro hijos. And I am proud of my four children. Agradecida con el programa. No tengo palabras para decir muchas gracias a todo el personal. I am thankful with the program. I don't have words to thank this program. Actualmente uh, uh, pertenezco al grupo de RLC. Currently, I become, uh, to, I become to a group that is called RLC. Ahí aprendo a defenderme y ayudar a las madres solteras como yo a defenderse. And I learn how to advocate for single mothers, how to defend themselves. Y decirles que sí se puede, que no tengan miedo a pedir ayuda porque la hay. And to tell them that there is help, that don't be afraid to ask for help, because there is help. La importancia sobre la innovación de este nuevo proyecto. The main thing about this new project and why it is important. Es la esperanza de que muchos niños que ahora crecen. Is the hope that many children that are now growing. No estén viviendo en las calles o en los carros en tiempo de calor o en tiempo de frío. Are not living on the streets in the heat or in the cold, like in the streets or in cars. Las personas que siempre enfrentan un desafío the no tienen que tener miedo, deben de ser valientes y fuertes. The people that are facing a challenge 
should not be afraid, they have to be brave. Porque todos somos seres humanos. Because we are all human beings. Arriba o abajo siempre vamos a estar en la misma posición. We are always in the same position whether we are up here or down here. We are the same. Mirando hacia el futuro. Looking towards the future. Yo tengo metas que sigo cumpliendo. I have goals that I continue fulfilling. Y no quiero que termine la ayuda pública para las personas arizonenses, para las familias arizonenses. And I want the public help to continue for Arizonans, families. Y otra vez, muchas gracias a todo el personal. And thank you again very much for, to all the persons. Thank you, Maria. That was wonderful. In closing, I'd like to thank our current resident leaders, in addition to our many partners and stakeholders, and of course, the housing department team and the leadership of Angela Duncan has been working on this project. We're so passionate about the work they do for the Edison East Lake community for being here today. Also, many thanks to our funding partners for the commitment to the development of Hirasol. I'd also like to acknowledge Jackie Berry Ever, who are here in the audience, and Carl Ober with the Pride Board for being here today, so thank you very much for being here today, and all the other partners out there as well. I also want to recognize the Walking Beat, who've been very part of this community and helping us manage and get successful outcomes as well. We are excited to continue the momentum of transformation in Hirasol, as well as other exciting changes that will be coming to this in East Lake community. While we celebrate the groundbreaking today, we look forward to having you return when we celebrate Hirasol's grand opening in 2027. Thank you to all of our speakers today. We'll now head over to turn some ground and take a few Three, photos. Two, as well. one.